Yo, 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 what's up everybody? It's Kevin here and today I'm gonna to show you my top five ways of how to make wavetables with Serum. So there's probably a few more other ways that you can go about making wavetables, but I'm gonna show you my top five. So let's get into it right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start off with the coolest ones first. So everything from importing images to samples. So let's start off with number one, importing PNGs. So this one is uh, the most experimental. So a PNG is an image. Uh, I can show you maybe what the ones I'm looking at look like so you get a good idea of the kind of stuff uh, that I'm working with. So I'm working with my logo and stuff and this is a mostly black and white photo. So this is kind of what kind of transfers over a little bit better into Serum. That's why I use black and white photos because it just works a little bit better. So let's get into the other way, uh, which would be uh, importing samples. So there's a bunch of ways to import samples. One way is to just drag and drop it. Um, I prefer using uh, the 10, 24 frames. Um, you can play around with all these other ones, but I usually, when I just drag and drop, go for this. Um, you know, I like that amount of frames. I feel like that gets the, uh, the sample I want in the way that I want it. And of course, when you do this, you have to go to the wavetable editor and it will help you if you uh, crossfade or do a spectral morph on this just to kind of fill in the in-between spaces of these wavetables. So we can see that when we imported that, it gave us a certain amount of frames. Um, what I like to do is kind of delete the tails of this, so like all the extra frames that are not really being used. You can go to add and remove, uh, remove multi-selection. And from there, I like to go to morph, uh, spectral or crossfade will work. And now you can see that this has added a lot more frames. So now it's uh, the full 256 and uh, you can do other processing like normalize and stuff like that. But in this case, we're just gonna look at it the way it is. And now it's kind of a more full, uh, kind of smoother wavetable. So that's one way to do it, uh, just drag and drop. Another way to import samples is just to go into the wavetable editor, go import. And the only reason I think you would want to come here to do this is to just go to uh, fixed frame size. So this is where you can uh, select uh, from this window and it'll ask you how many frames you want to put in. Uh, so I usually just put a thousand if I'm going to do it this way, which is kind of similar to what I'm doing in the other, uh, uh, when I'm just bringing in by drag and drop. So it's almost the same amount of frames but I still go about it the same way. I uh, will just go to morph, crossfade at this point, and uh, yeah, let's go on to the third way, which actually will take us back to our wavetable editor. So in this way, we can enter formulas, and formulas are other cool ways on how to kind of change your wavetable, so that kind of leads me into my fourth uh, example of how to make wavetables. So uh, some of these like multi uh, options are really cool. So like square filter, it'll just kind of do like a really in weird, it'll just kind of squareify your whole thing and kind of do this sort of example of, of this. So we can see what we started with and it's kind of all become square. So there are formulas that you could use. There is also stuff like, uh, let's see, another squareify. So this one is a little different from the other. Um, but let's go back to the wavetable editor. So formulas is the fourth way. Let me show you the third way, which would be to enter your own formula. So if we do quotation marks, any word we want. So let's just do Kevin, because that's me. And then quotation mark and enter. Now we get a text to speech sort of wavetable. So that's really cool and neat. And of course the same process would be to morph it, to kind of blend it and smooth in between each frame. So. Uh, that gives us a much nicer wavetable position to kind of play with when we automate that. So those are the four ways I generally go about when I'm working with outside stuff. But I have a fifth way that I think everyone kind of knows or should start using a little bit more often, which is just resampling and rendering uh, my oscillator. So uh, you can resample what you've done in an oscillator and send it and just save it or you could render the, the warp. So the warp would be anything in the little morph section here, uh, or the warp section. And so the only ones that won't work is stuff like FM and AM and stuff like that. Things are routed from other places. 
Um, so you can't really do it like that, but sync is a good example. So if we're looking at just a assign to solve, which I think is my own custom wavetable. So let's just actually go to a basic shapes. Let's just start off with a sine wave. We have some modulation on the sync. So our wavetable looks like this, just this one frame for now. Um, I'm just gonna keep it like that. And if we go ahead and render the oscillator B warp, now we get a complete, now we can see what that looks like kind of consolidated. And let me just get rid of this for now. So now as we go through that image, we can see what that sync was doing, which is kind of just increasing sort of the frequency and it's really cool. So that is another way I go about making wavetables. And especially when I use the basic shapes, I like going through this technique because it's like, I like sine waves, but let's say I want to save that sync for some reason, if I'm going to do an FM from B. So like I am in this case, which is a very common way to sound design with FM synthesis, starting with sine waves. And now I can free this up and uh, do something else. So maybe I want to do a mirror and some cool stuff like that. And it just opens up the possibilities. And I like, of course, saving all of that. So um, probably the most important thing to know is how to save your wavetables, which is just in this little box. And I like to save it to my user folders. Hopefully you guys found this useful. It's just a bunch of ways I go about sound designing and making wavetables. So let me know what else you guys want to see. And of course, thanks for watching and late.